my name is Maria Dobryakova, and it is my pleasure and honor to present our new book, Key Competences and New Literacies, with a very important subtitle, From Slogans to School Reality. This work represents not just the culmination of extensive research, but a collective journey across continents, disciplines, and paradigms. Let's be honest, when it comes to 21st century skills, it's a bit of a conceptual mess out there. Endless frameworks, contradictory language, overlapping competences, enough to make your head spin. Just one example, a really marvelous, highly detailed UNESCO guiding report on media and information literacy mentioned 23 kinds of literacies pertaining to media and information literacy alone, 23. Our international dream team of experts came together on a mission to cut through the noise and develop a clear, coherent guide for bringing these competences into school curriculum and instruction. Our book arises from the collaborative efforts of authors from eight diverse countries, Canada, Finland, Poland, England, China, South Korea, the United States, and Russia. We thus explored best practices and philosophies from East and West to venture into the heart of educational transformation in the 21st century. Why, you might ask, did we embark on this, on this journey? The answer lies in the recognition of a rapidly evolving world, a world where traditional educational frameworks struggle to keep pace with the demands of technological advancement and societal shifts. Our mission was to explore how national education systems can foster the competences and literacies vital for navigating this complexity. But how do different countries contribute to this discourse and what specific cases have they presented? Canada shed light on coherent policies rooted in Western philosophy, with Ontario as a model case. England highlighted controversial turns in recent years, yet with islands of radical innovation. South Korea demonstrated a focus on future-oriented skills while preserving traditional values. Russia provided insights into challenges of integrating competences into a strongly knowledge-focused system. Each country presents a unique narrative. These narratives share a common theme, the urgent need for a curriculum that not only imparts knowledge, but equips learners with the skills to adapt, innovate, and thrive. How then do we define these competencies and literacies within our framework? After lively debates, visits to innovative schools, and many late night brainstorming sessions over coffee, we emerged with a powerful framework. It boils down to three mega competencies, or rather clusters of competencies, thinking and reasoning, interpersonal and intrapersonal, plus two categories of literacy, domain general, such as digital or media literacy, and domain specific, like financial or environmental literacy. Clean, simple, and we find it hugely practical. Our book shares aha moments from successful systems worldwide. It turns out standalone courses are not the answer. The real power is transforming teaching, learning, and assessment across the board. Finland showed us how embedding competences into disciplinary learning allows students to gain knowledge while developing creative problem solving. Poland's impressive PISA score rise revealed the power of clear learning standards coupled with competency focus. The United States highlighted pockets of radical innovation like project-based schools blurring classroom walls. And China 
taught us how aligning model, modern skills with traditional Eastern values prepares global citizens. Here lies a pressing question. In our pursuit to integrate these competencies and literacies, how do we avoid overwhelming our learners? The balance is delicate. Our approach advocates for integrating these skills seamlessly within the curriculum, enhancing rather than overloading the learning experience. But what does this mean for curriculum, for curriculum design in an era where AI and technological developments are reshaping the very fabric of learning? The integration of AI and technology in education offers unprecedented opportunities for personalized learning, adaptive educational tools, and access to a global repository of knowledge. Yet, it also poses challenges. How do we ensure that the human element of learning, the development of critical thinking, empathy, and ethical reasoning remains at the forefront? As we stand on the brink of a new educational paradigm, our book serves as a beacon guiding the development of informed, adaptable, and holistic curriculum designs. It invites policymakers, educators, and stakeholders to envision a future where education transcends the acquisition of knowledge, fostering a generation of learners equipped to navigate the complexities of a rapidly changing world. For all the talk about the 21st century skills, few countries have cracked the code. This book highlights the way with best practices and policies to ignite students' potential. I hope it spurs a reimagining of what our students need to thrive in work, life, and citizenship. Our young people's future depends on getting this right. In closing, I pose one final question. Are we ready to embrace this transformation, to redefine the essence of learning for a future we can only begin to imagine? We were finalizing this book in the worst of times. First, the pandemic of COVID-19, then the war. Yet we hope this book helps bring the best of times as education is a key to so many social issues. Our collective journey through the pages of this book invites you to join us in this critical dialogue, shaping the future of education for generations to come. Thank you for embarking on this journey with us. Thank you very much.